The number arrangement machine, when given an input line of words and numbers, rearranges them following a particular rule. The following is an illustration of the uh, input and its rearrangement. So if you can see, the input here has got a, a set of three digit numbers. What are these numbers? 484, 529, 676, 729, 841 and 961, right? And like I've mentioned, uh, if, you, if you observe, these numbers are all perfect squares, right? 22 square, 23 square, 26 square and so on. And then there is a step by step process, step one to step five, where step five is the output of the given input, right? Step five is the output. And we have been given one other input for which we have to do a, do a similar process and identify the different steps and based on which we can answer the questions asked. Now, usually what we do in machine input output questions is to first look at the last step, right? Look at step five and try to identify the logic. But here if you see step five has got all different numbers, 1225, 225, 35, uh, you know, 25, 16 and one. All the numbers have in fact got changed, right? What we had in input was completely different. So clearly, depending on step five to identify the logic is not the right thing to do here. I think the only observation that we can make is the numbers here in step five have been arranged in descending order, right? The highest number first and then arrange them in a manner that we get the smallest number at the end. But that's not enough for us to solve the question. So what we'll do now is actually look at the complete step by step process and see if we can crack the logic. Now one observation is the number of numbers are fixed in each step if you see from input till the last step, step five, there are six numbers in each step, right? Each step had got six numbers, has got six numbers. So let's see what the logic is from input to step one, right? Try to identify the logic from input to step one. So what do you think has happened? 484, 529, 676, 729, 841 and 961 have become 8, 43, 29, 61, 4 and 3. 61, 4 and 3. Now, assuming that there's numbers have not been shuffled and there's some operation which has been done on each of the numbers to arrive at what is there in step one, let's try to decipher the logic there, right? 484 has become 8, 484 has become 8, 529 has become 43. Now, see, this is the problem, right? I mean, if, if you see, you solve any number of questions you want, but you'll have to actually spend the time in the exam and, and go for trial and error. I mean, there is no formula that can give you the answer directly. There is no technique or there is no shortcut which can tell you why 484 has become 8. Or is it actually 484 that has become 8 or something else? The only way to do it is trial and error. You try with some logic. If you get it, well and good. Otherwise, if you get an error, try with some other logic. I mean, that's that's how it works. So if you observe 484 becoming 8. I mean, now that I already know the logic, let me directly explain you what is happening here, right? 484. What we are doing here is multiplying the hundreds place with the units place in the number 4 into 4. How much is 4 into 4? 16. And from that 16, you subtract the tens place. You're getting it. So 16 minus 8 is 8. And that's how we get the number here. Are you able to follow? So the, the logic is multiply the units place with the hundreds place. Multiply the digits in the units place and hundreds place and subtract the tens place from the product that we get. So 5 nines, 45. 45 minus 2 will result in 43. Then 6 into 6. 36, 36 minus 7, 36 minus 7 is 29 and so on. 7 into 9, 63 minus 2 gives you 61. 8 into 1 is 8 minus 4 gives you uh, 4, right? And then 9 into 1 is 9 minus 6 gives you 3. So the first step is very clear. What happens in step 1 is you take the product of the uh, unit space and the hundreds place and then subtract tens place from the result that you obtain. So that gives you step one. Now look at step two. What's happening in step two? How did we get step two here, right? So what do you think is the logic in step two? How did we get the numbers in step two from what is there in step one? What has happened? Anyone who's got this logic here? See, I think step two is based on the, you know, you know, pairs of numbers in step one. So if you if you look at it. In step one, the first two numbers are 8 and 43. The difference of these two numbers will give you the number 35, right? 43 minus 8 is 35. Or 8 difference 43 is 35. Similarly, if you look at 43 and 29, what's the difference between 43 and 29? It's 14. Then 29 and 61. So basically 61 minus 29. 61 minus 29 is 32. 61 and 4. What's the difference between 61 and 4? 57. 4 and 3, the difference is 1. And finally, we have we are left with only one number here, 3. So how do we get the number 5 from 100? See, it's, it's like a cycle. You just connect 3 with 8. 
right? The last number should be paired with the first number of the step. So 3 and 8, what's the difference? The difference between 3 and 8 is 5. So that gives you the last digit here. You understand? So what's hap what, what happens from step 1 to step 2 is you take the difference between two consecutive numbers to arrive at the numbers in step 2. Alright? Look at step 3. I think step 3 is easy to crack, right? Step 3, what happens here is you multiply the two digits to get the step 3. So 3 into 5 is 15, right? 3 into 5 15. 1 into 4 is 4. 3 into 2 here gives you 6. 5 into 7 is 35. Here we have only one digit 1, so that results in 1, right? You don't multiply that with anything. And then 5 leaves you with 5. So step 3 is easy, right? You multiply the digits of the numbers in the previous step to arrive at step 3. What happens from step 3 through step 4? Step 3 to step 4 again I think is very easy to identify, right? 15 has become 225, 4 has become 16, 6 has become 36. And there's clearly a pattern, right? We are taking squares of the numbers in step 3, right? 15 squared is 225, 4 squared is 16, 6 squared 36, 35 squared is 1225, 1 squared is 1 and 5 squared is 25. So step 4 is comparatively easier than the previous steps. And finally the step 5. What happens in step 5? Now try to compare that with step 4. I mean you'll be able to get the logic, right? From step 4 to step 5, what is the change? Now, if you observe the numbers are all same. The numbers in step 4 and step 5 are all same. 225, 16, 36, uh, 12, 25, 1 and 25. The only change that has happened here is the numbers have been arranged in descending order, right? So if you see the highest number in the step 4 here is 1225, that takes the first position. Followed by the next highest number 225. Followed by, uh oh, I think there's an error here. It should be 36 and not 35. Sorry about this. Yeah, next highest number is 36, then 25, then 16, and finally we have got 1. So step 4 to step 5 is simple. Uh, arrangement in the descending order. Clear? So I think five steps there. Each step has got its own logic. You just need to apply that to get the required answers. Right? So if you have to quickly repeat in step one, you uh, take the product of the unit space and the hundreds place. You get a result and from that result you subtract the tens place to arrive at the number. So 4 into 4 is 16 minus 8 gives you 8. 5 into 9, 45, minus 2 gives you 43. In step 2, you take the difference of consecutive numbers. So 8 difference 43 gives you 35. 43 difference 29 gives you 14 and so on. Step 3, you take the product of the two digits. 3 into 5, 15. 1 into 4, 4 and so on. Step 4, you take the squares of the given numbers. And in step 5, you just arrange the numbers in the descending order. Now let's do the same thing for the given input. Right? So I think I've got the input here exactly beside the illustration so that we can perform the same step by step process. So what happens in step one? What do we have to do in step one? Like we have discussed earlier, you have to take the product of the unit space with the hundreds place and subtract the tenths place from that product. So three into three is nine. Nine minus four gives you five. Then six into six, 36 minus two is 34. Five into two is 10 minus one is nine. One into three is three minus three is zero, right? Two into eight is 16 minus one gives you 15. 5 into 5 is 25, minus 1 results in 24, and 6 times 6 is 36, minus 4 gives you 32. You understand? 3, 3 is 9, minus 4 is 5, 36 minus 2 is 34, 10 minus 1 is 9, 3 minus 3 is 0, 16 minus 1 is 15, 25 minus 1 is 24, and 36 minus 4 is 32. Then what happens in step 2? What did we observe in step 2? Uh, we are taking the difference of consecutive numbers, right? 8 difference 43 gives you 35, right? Then 43 difference 29 gives you 14 and so on. So do the same thing for, uh, you know, step 2 here. So 5 difference 34 is 29, right? 34 difference 29 is 25. 9 difference 0 is 9. 0 difference 15 gives you 15. 15 difference 24. 15 difference 24 is 9. 24 difference 32 is 8 and remember you have to pair the last number with the first one right the number of numbers have to be same how many numbers are there in input here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 in step 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 if you look at step 2 so far we have obtained only 6 numbers how do we get the 7th number take the difference of the first number with the last number so 32 difference 5 is 27 you understand 5 difference 34 is 29 34 difference 29 is 25 9 difference 0 gives you 9, 0 difference 15 is 15, 15 difference 24 is 9 again, 34 difference 32, sorry, 24 difference 32 is 8, and 32 minus 5 gives you 27. Move to step 3. 
what do we do in step 3 uh, i think step 3 was the product of the two digits right 3 into 5 15 1 into 4 4 and so on so 2 into 9 is 18 2 into 5 is 10 9 gives you 9 1 into 5 is 5 9 again gives you 9 8 is 8 and 2 into 7 is 14 right very easy then step 4 what is step 4 i think step 4 you take the squares of the numbers so 18 squared how much is 18 squared 324 remember you're supposed to learn up to 30 squares by heart right you should know uh, up to 30 square by heart right so 18 square 324 10 square 100 9 square is 81 25 81 again 8 square is 64 and 14 square is 196 and the last step what do we do in the last step arrange the numbers in descending order so i think we'll start with 324 that itself is the highest number followed by the next highest is 196 followed by 100 then we have 81 and since it is repeating we just have to take it twice right 81 81 followed by 64 and finally we've got 25 that's the last step 324 196 100 81, 81, 64, and 25. Alright? So that's the final output. We have up, obtained the required output here. And in, in, in such cases, remember, there will always be 5 steps. Because the number of steps here doesn't depend on the number of elements that we have in the input. Right? It's a unique step. Each step has got, has got its own unique logic. Right? So you just perform that logic and obtain the required step there so whatever be the number of numbers there will always be five steps in, in such questions okay and i think answering the questions now will be very easy like what kind of questions will be asked there will usually be five questions along with machine input output questions right so the questions will be like what is the difference between the first number and the fourth number in step three so the first number in step three is 18 the fourth number in step three is five the difference between these two is 13 what is the number in the third position from right end in step 4? The number in the third position from right end in step 4. So third position from right end in step 4. First, second and third. The third number from right end in step 4 is 81. Right? Or, or if I have to frame a question, I can say, what is the difference between the numbers at the two extremes in step 2? What is the difference between the numbers at the two extremes in step 2? So what are the numbers at the extremes here? 29 and 27 in step 2. What is the difference between these two? 2. Right? Then maybe the question can be, you know, how many numbers are there between uh, 25 and 8 in step 2? How many numbers are there between 25 and 8 in step 2? So between 25 and 8, we have got 3 numbers. So your answer would be 3. Right? And maybe the question can be, what is the sum of the, uh, the first number from left end and the first number from right end in step 5? Sum of the first number from left end. And the first number from right end in step 5. So the numbers are 324 and 25. The sum of these two numbers is 349. So whatever be the question. Answering that question is going to be very easy. Once you have done the complete step by step process. Alright.